on cornerofthegalaxy.com. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% LA Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world of the five-time MLS Cup champion, LA Galaxy. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I'm your host, Josh Gessman, coming to you on a Thursday, November 10th. That's right, it's November. It's actually, like, almost the middle of November, if you're really playing along, which is scary. Uh, It's so dark outside right now. I know most of you feel like you should probably have been sleeping two hours ago uh, as we all adjust to the time change. Uh, And, you know, a little sea change in MLS as well. Sea change for the LA Galaxy. Some reactions needed. Some trades have happened. Maybe some targets acquired? We're going to tell you all about what the LA Galaxy are up to now that the offseason sort of starts to go into its full sprint here. Uh, And it's going to be a little crazy. To help me do all that, we have him back for uh, another week in a row, which is always good. It's Eric, the Portuguese Hammer Vieira. Hammer, how's it going, buddy? Shriek and tap. We got two in a row, two weeks in a row. And I I will say, going to your point, it's World Cup season. So we're in the MLS offseason. You've got your U.S. women's national team. Thank you. Think, in, the, in the same neighborhood. I like winners. Yeah. I like winners. <laughs> I've got my, my Portugal gear. I have my, my jerseys in the back here. Of course, laying the wrong way since what happens when you mirror the video. So, uh, yeah, it's World Cup season. So we're kind of shifting gears given what happened in MLS Cup this weekend. Uh, I'm ready to talk about World Cup, right? We're not going to talk about anything that happened in MLS, right? You and I were talking and we <laughs> said it would we would not be doing our jobs and quite honestly, I think it, it all applies because it, it should apply. Uh, yeah. it, we would not be doing our jobs if we didn't discuss what has happened. The sea change. There has been a change. And for a long time, the LA Galaxy could sit here and pound their chests and talk about MLS Cups till the face turned blue. And now we're in a position uh, and the LA Galaxy are in a position that they don't they don't get to do that as much anymore. Uh, it's tough to pound your chest whenever the guys who joined the league not too long ago and you can argue that they've been around forever with Chivas USA and all that fun. So that's a fun argument. It just, I don't think it has any relevance for right now. Um, But the guys, the noisy neighbors got an MLS cup. They did it. They pulled it off. They were on the cusp of losing an MLS cup. Yeah. Crazy game. Just, just with the the overtime and then the narrative and the back and forth, the, you know, goalkeeper, you know, breaking his leg and and (laughs) extra time and then extra time on top of extra time. And then how much fun we were making fun of, bail for coming here for golf and he's been basically a ghost and then he shows up and clutches up and so easy header by the way let's 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 not pretend like it was anything amazing you know and and i know there's people uh you and i were even talking about you're like well it's sort of you know maybe it negates some of what zlatan did right because of it but at the same time bail had a pedestrian header zlatan never really did anything pedestrian so i'll I'll say that those are two different levels but the bottom line is they have an mls cup up the road Right. And they get to hold it up and they get to show it and they don't have to pretend that the, that the supporter shield was something that it wasn't. Yeah. Well, uh, and it, this kind of proves that argument, too, because I was having that was one of the ribs that I had on, you know, some of the, the fans that I know that I go back and forth with is, you know, they were celebrating that in a, a lot harder than they celebrated those supporter shields. So that tells you that the MLS Cup does have more weight uh, because there that was definitely something that they were proud to have accomplished. Always has have yeah, exactly. ha- always have had as well. Um, it yeah. has it has more weight. It is yeah. more important. It exactly. is the thing that everybody in the league wants to win is MLS Cup. A supporter shield is nice. You know, a conference championship is nice. Supporter shield is nice. It's not what you play. It's not the big you pl- one. You play for an MLS Cup. Um, yeah. And if for a team that says that they measure themselves on MLS Cups, 
and the success that they've had in it, the LA Galaxy have been failing that. So if you look at the the tenure of Mr. Chris Klein, and if you want to give him 2014, go ahead. He has an MLS Cup there. Um, but that was sort of like Caleb Porter coming in and winning with other people's players all the time. Yeah, it, was like um, it, was, it was just with a $1 million loan from my father. I be, you know, started my empire. But I started my own a empire. small loan. <laughs> yep, that's right. That's right. With $20 million, I became a 15 millionaire. Yeah. Um, you know, you know if, you, if you want to, you can. Um, but the bottom line is the LA Galaxy have been losing. They've sucked. They have not been fun to watch. Uh, and they have allowed, quite honestly, without much of a fight, a team from up the road to steal most of the thunder in Los Angeles. And if you're not paying attention to the things that happen in LA, LA, one of the media markets of the world, perhaps the center of the, of all things media, right? Whenever you look across the, across the world and everything that happens, what do I, what, what do I always say that you have to have in LA? You have to have championships, right? And you, you have, have to, to have stars, right? Yeah. yeah you, have you have to, to win. It's, yeah. it's the recipe for both. And, and, so, and they have, they have the recipe. They cook the yeah. cake. They get yeah. it. They, and they, they they added the final ingredients this season, really. They which, did, which is the kind of the funny thing is because, given the past years, this is the one year where we felt like the Galaxy probably had the best chance to beat them, and that's you know kind of circling it back around to Galaxy talk. And I know there are some people in the chat who are not crazy that we're having this discussion I don't because care. At, at the beginning it's you know it's not my team, so it shouldn't concern me. But this is a rival; it's a local rival, and if you don't think this affects the LA Galaxy, then your your head is in the sand. You can't be that. You know, um, you know, we, we can't act like this doesn't matter, and it, it, so it does have an an impact on on how the galaxy, you know, adjust things go moving forward. The bragging rights take a hit, uh, like you were saying that the Zlatan games, I think, take a little bit of a hit because those were big moments and you know raucous atmospheres. But an MLS Cup final, it doesn't. That's the biggest stage possible. So, you know, what you can, you can't point back and say, well, that regular season game we beat you on the you know this or that or that op- U.S. Open Cup game. It's just not going to hold a candle, um, you know, to, for for whatever uh, you know banter and bragging rights you have. So that's why it, it, it stings, you know, for up the road. And I think it is a mark on Chris Klein, uh, you know, that this happened under his watch. You can say, well, it doesn't have to do with his team, you know, why would this be a mark against him? But you letting your rivals, you know, get get a, a trophy in the cabinet does impact, you know, you're you're competing. And so when it's head to head like that, um, you know. We, we took the L there. And so my philosophy is, you know, when you lose, everyone handles it differently. So people go to social media, they let it all out and do their thing. My philosophy is kind of, you know, you take the L and then you just be quiet. No one likes the guy who loses the fight and then keeps chirping. So that's kind of my thing. But And, and par- part of it is probably my pride, too, that I don't want to publicly put it out there and nourish the uh, LAFC fans with my tears uh, and posts. I, I don't want to give them that satisfaction, even though the irony of me recording on a podcast and kind of saying that but that's just that's what the discord's for you know go yeah. to the safe space with galaxy fans that we don't need to give them any more ammo or anything there but i think uh the galaxy not i'm not gonna say the legacy took a hit because the legacy is still intact still it's you know there there <laughs> there were media outlets who were still confused that the gal they thought the galaxy won another mls cup because they still yep. didn't understand that there's a second team and i don't know if that's more insulting to LAFC or if it's more insulting to the galaxy that people don't know the difference, but, but regardless, it, it does take a hit and uh, you know, we just have to take it on the chin and just keep moving forward. And this is, it's a hit on Klein and for the Klein out crowd, I think this is something that maybe tips the scales a little bit further in that direction, whether it has an impact on the people who make those ultimate decisions, we'll find out, but uh, it, it is a stinger. It is a stinger. And so that's why we're talking about it because it does impact, you know, what, what the galaxy may do moving forward. Yeah, there, there's some there's some positives in all this, too. And I, I think you said it, by the way, what they gave us a two dollar super chat, uh, the famous Taylor Twelman quote of what are we doing? What are we doing? It, um, it is World Cup season. So yeah. it is. Yeah, it, it is. Um, there are some positives of this as well. There's two things that I see and we'll see whether or not these are these are are, are accurate as you go down the long term as, as we go is one. There were there were two teams that could have beat LAFC this year. Uh, two teams that had a likely chance of beating LAFC at any point during the year. Uh, and really, it was the LA Galaxy, and it was probably Philadelphia. And Philadelphia, man, no matter how bad Galaxy fans are feeling, they're not feeling as bad as Philadelphia fans who lost yeah. two championships within the span of hours. It's probably a record that will never well, be broken, right? I, was, well, I will say, I think I mentioned it on this podcast as well, being eliminated on uh, Decision Day versus Houston at home with Zlatan, and then having the Dodgers lose the World Series that night, that was brutal. But then MLS Cup Final does take it once one step further. Right. So I will say, Philly, congratulations for being 
that that was a miserable miserable Saturday for them. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 um you know again, but I will say that the Galaxy, you know, were one of those teams. I feel that way. I also feel that there's this crescendo happening with LAFC right now. Um, they're going to have to reload, and they've been pretty good at reloading. So I don't know that it's a it's a big deal, but they have a very good team. It's deep, but it feels like this was the year that this team was built for, right? So they're at sort of the peak, whereas the Galaxy weren't really built to make sort of the playoff run probably that they did, but now have a ton of momentum really going into the next season, and now it's up to Greg Vanny. Um, and I think Kevin said this. He, he at least told it to me, and, and I, I think I'll pass it along, is that if you're looking at who's making deals and who's trading things and who's, who's making, it's Greg Vanny. So if you want to know who traded Cameron Dunbar, which we're going to talk about, it's Greg Vanny. Do you want to know who traded Will, uh, Derek Williams, which we'll talk about? It was Greg Vanny. You want to know who's moving pieces around and doing the stuff? It's Greg Vanny. Um, and, you know, it's nice that people, I guess, in the front office were able to sort of like put their arms out and be like arm distance away and give Greg this this opportunity. But it's Greg. Greg's the one making those decisions. I think he wants to be the one making those decisions. Um, and perhaps we have a unifying thought uh, here building a team that hasn't been around for so long. Um, so, you know, to me, there has to be a reaction from the LA Galaxy. You can't just sit here and pretend like you didn't see it. You can't yeah. sit there and say, well, we're, we're the LA Galaxy and just leave it at that. That's not how this works. Um, you just got punched in the stomach. You're stumbling around. What are you going to do to answer back? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what you could do to answer back is you go win an MLS Cup next year. That'll, that'll solve it. <laughs> that'll solve it, right? Because, It'll be like, okay. I think, I think one of the arguments, and we've heard it all the time, you know, with the banter is, well, since we've been in the league, you know, the, what's what's the head to head? And we always had the, well, if, if you can't win the big one, it doesn't matter. And then now that they've won the big one, okay, then that could be a fair argument. So you're right. How do you get back? If we, you win one, when then, then not that it's back level because that doesn't, right. you know, we're not erasing, you know, the legacy and the great teams that came before and the history that's made. It's not doing that, but it, it does, you know, kind of, kind of create that piece. But to your point, as far as like, you know, moving forward and this being, you know, you want to see the LA Galaxy moving, making moves, and you want to see Greg Vanny being active. Is the Galaxy were an extra time goal away from beating them, or from taking them to the limit and possibly advancing and being the yes. team that knocked them out? And so you need to look at that, and you don't say, "Well, we almost beat them, so let's just bring everyone back." And I'm sure if we just try a little bit harder, we'll figure it out. It's like no, there were obvious gaps in that game. Yep. And there were pieces on the roster that went flat, and changes need to be made. So you need to go. Where were we falling short? Fix those pieces so you can come back stronger next season. And I think hopefully that's what Vanny has in the cards. I don't know if we're ready to talk about the trades that happened, but you know, it, the trades that have happened, they're, they're players that maybe had some promise and maybe I'm not happy to see go, but at the end of right. the day, the players who are on the roster this season simply were not good enough to get it done. As happy as we were for that final third, they weren't good enough to make that final run. And so improvements need to be made. And if that means people need to leave the team, or, you know, people need to be traded and, you know, changes need to be made, then that's a good thing. This is a good thing that these things are happening. The Galaxy aren't staying pat. Yeah, it is. it is. It's moving. It's evolving. I thought it was really interesting. Jonathan Tannenwald uh, put out a tweet just to show you how big it was in Philadelphia, right? And by the way, what, I think the most watch MLS Cup since 2017. Um, and that's a, that's a super high bar to mm -hmm. to put it. It's, it was a very, very big um, game. It got all the attention. Um, I know there's a bunch of whiners over here pretending like the media has anything to do with how they pay attention to which team and, and all that stuff. Well, I'll tell you why the media pays attention more to LAFC. One, they were still in the playoffs when the Galaxy got knocked out. So that's one of the reasons they're going to go over there. Also, yeah. they win more. Um, I don't know if you have are new here, but they win more. But uh, I, I will say that I, I saw, I think, I want to say it was even a former Galaxy player or, or who pointed this out on, uh, I think it may have been Dan Gargan. But mm -hmm. he, had, he had pointed out on the MLS social media that from when NYC won the cup, there were like something like 10 interrupted, uninterrupted posts of them celebrating. And right. then, you know, this past weekend, there were it's like 35 uninterrupted posts of them celebrating. So yeah. there was there, there were being there is a little bit of a largest that, media market. Yeah. I know NYC, but look at what NYC wasn't at home. You don't yeah. have that. You didn't have that same look. Right. There's plenty of reasons why. Again, I'll tell you. It's uh, it's like the cool. It's a it's a, a hip thing. It's a cool when scene it, with the when Atlanta Justin was Bieber. coming in. Right. Yeah. We, we, <laughs> I mean, we talked about it the same thing whenever it's it's a cool, shiny toy. The yeah. the 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 media is going to follow the story. The story there was if Philadelphia won, 
it would have been a really big celebration too because that's you're talking about the underdogs they don't spend a lot of money like the whole deal you can go through this stuff and how it works right um and bottom line is that especially in los angeles with two teams you think that they're they they have dedicated soccer writers that go for each team they don't um and there's coverage on both and so what's going to happen whenever one team is out and the other team that's going to go that way right and especially when one team's playing well remember the la galaxy were basically on the on the edge of completely losing out of everything in the middle of the summer this yeah, press box was empty we talked yeah. about it right there yeah. was nobody there covering it they were overwatching lafc who was winning right and then towards the end of the season what happens the la galaxy start winning and people start showing back up and the whole deal win games okay you want positive media coverage Win games. That's it. It's simple. It's a yeah. really simple formula, especially yeah, well, in Los Angeles. Well, we saw it at the beginning of the season. You know, hope springing eternal. Uh, you know, selling out games. You know, the Dignity Hill Sports Park was just rocking, and then you go on a skid, and all of a sudden, eh, I don't know if I want to make it out to a, a Wednesday game. I don't know. The games at noon. I'm not. You know, have, uh, you know, birthday party to go to. I don't know if I'm going to make. It doesn't be, have that same thing when your team's not on that hot streak. And so, we, we saw that. We saw that playing out play out during the season. No, it it a hundred percent. So that's what you see. But anyway, back to uh, Philadelphia. At one point, Jonathan Tannewald put out uh, there were five hundred and fifty-two thousand people during penalty kicks, right, watching uh, in Philadelphia, and basically that amounted to twenty-six percent of all the TVs in the region were tuned <laughs> to a soccer game. That's that awesome. is. That is such a nuts, crazy stat, and I love it so much. And I listen. I know a bunch of us were watching MLS Cup too. That MLS Cup had a lot of good storylines. Um, it was, you know, a big team, a big spending team, big names, all this stuff, a team that up to that point hadn't gotten it done. Right. And then you had yeah. Philadelphia who doesn't spend a lot of money. You know, they're the underdogs. Everybody always underestimates them. And by, I think almost any measure in any count had outplayed LAFC during the season, even though that they didn't come up with the sport show, they stumbled once. Yeah, um, they and, were tied on points. It, yes, it they was, were. it was the wins that made the difference. Yeah. Yeah, so and goal differential would have had Philly yeah. win the shield. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you're talking about two teams that, and also you had number one versus number one on each yeah. side, right? I mean, that, that rarely happened. That was the first happens. time that happened in a while either. So, so you had all these things. So again, for me, it's acknowledging that that happened and now doing the things. And like you said, doing the things that you're supposed to do in order to make the team better. So the LA Galaxy out there, active, trade window opens. The LA Galaxy do the first thing, which is that they trade Cameron Dunbar to Minnesota. Now, Eric, you were just last <laughs> Thursday <upset>. yeah. <laughs> yep, extolling the virtues of uh, of one Cameron Dunbar, uh, who has uh, looked very bright at times for the L.A. Galaxy, even on the senior team in, um, you know, preseason trainings, those types of things. And then you see him go down and play with L.A. Galaxy 2 and had a really good year with L.A. Galaxy 2, did a lot of good things. So you have Cameron Dunbar, who's an up and comer. He's a winger. It's a position of need for the LA Galaxy, right? And the LA Galaxy are going ahead and they move him to Minnesota. The Galaxy gets $75,000 in general allocation money in 2023, which is important. We say the years because sometimes stuff is not of this year. Yeah, we'll get so, to that one. <laughs> yeah, so the LA Galaxy also get a third round draft pick. Listen, the draft pick was nothing. The 75 k was nothing. There's, That's there's, why it's done. Yeah. And, me, and, yeah. And, and so... And I understand all those things. It is my, I'll suggest this. I don't know this to be true, um, but I'll suggest that it was probably likely that Cameron Dunbar wanted, want, either wanted first team playing time or he wanted guaranteed first playing time or he wanted out. Um, and it looks like Minnesota was able to offer him that. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, and that, that when you saw the, <laughs> what did it end up being a third, a third round draft pick or third round, third round MLS super draft pick that's not when the superstars fall in your lap. Yes. Yes. The super draft sometimes does give you players. It's rare, but it's not in the third round of the no. super draft. And so that stung a little bit. And then the 75 K that doesn't seem like a lot for a no. player who had a lot of promise. And like I was talking about last week, this is a guy who I felt like could make the leap. They could bring him along, you know, someone like Julian Araujo who got called up, they kind of put him in the right position and he earned the, earned those minutes and it eventually became the starter. Someone like Efrain say what you will, but he's someone who was put in positions to succeed. Now, whether he took advantage of that or not, that's a different conversation, but he was put in those positions. And I was looking forward to having someone like Cameron Dunbar be put in those positions. I thought he had the talent to kind of eventually make that leap. Um, now here's where you kind of talked me off the ledge is um, I feel like <laughs> given what Cameron Dunbar did with G2, he could have, well, I would, would have much rather had him on the field than Kevin Cabral, uh, you know, looking back hindsight right. being what it is. Mm -hmm. But if 
if your answer to your problems is your homegrown, you know, 20 year old player, if that's the guy who's going to fix everything, then you're, you're in the wrong business. If we want to talk about winning MLS cups, that's not going to be what puts you over the top. It's nice to have that depth piece and to have that, um, you know, person that you want to bring along and eventually develop, but that's not going to be the game changer. That's not going to be what wins you MLS cup. And for that, I could live with it. And then to your point for, and I see this a lot, he seems to have not been a Vanny guy. You know, if, if he, if Vanny kind of sees, you know, you kind of saw the players who he fit his profile and he wanted in there. If, you know, Cameron Dunbar was the type of player that he wanted, we feel like we may have seen some minutes, maybe an open cup or maybe some different situations. He would have put him, you know, with first team training and he just never got that look. So whatever Vanny saw from him in training wasn't, wasn't a, a fit. And so I here as a, you know, amateur podcaster could say, yeah, I want to see Cameron Dunbar get the chance. But if the boss in charge is not going to give you the chance, then, I, you know, and again, you're saying you're speculating, but I wouldn't put it, you know, if I'm Cameron Dunbar, I'd say, hey, send me somewhere else. Send me somewhere where I can play, where I can get first team minutes, make right. something happen. And so if that if that is the case or if something similar to that, then, you know, credit to him for doing it. And then also credit to Greg Vanny for not holding on to him, you know, and being stubborn to that regard as well. So that's that's the positive spin on it. I would have loved to have kept them, but at the same time, um, going back to to my same point, just to repeat myself, if Cameron Dunbar is what you're hanging your hat on with no disrespect to him, because I like him, if that's where you're hanging out to make the difference between getting an MLS Cup and not, then then you have bigger problems. Yeah, and you know you also have to have to look at who's below him in terms of like on, on the pecking order of LA Galaxy too. Was uh, is there somebody else that they want to bring up and develop? Yeah. And with Cameron saying I want out, which again is speculation but would seem pretty likely. And Greg Vanny has shown himself to be sort of that player's coach, which is you don't want to be here much like Bruce Arena. You don't want to be here. You can go. It's, it's good. Let's, let's find you a place. Where would you like to go? Let's see if we can make it happen. Right. And so you can have those talks. You can, you can do those things. And listen, a lot of times it's not going to be fruitful whenever you get rid of a player like that. Right. You know, um, the LA galaxy were paying Dan stairs is, you know, some of his salary for him to go to Houston last year. He's in he, Houston now. He, he just, just signed. Yeah. Yeah. He just resigned a, 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 a contract. So he has a, a, a new contract with Houston. He has a new baby as well. Congratulations, Dan, and his wife. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, all that stuff worked out well for him. That, that was a, that was a Dave Romney. Dave Romney wanted out, right? I think he did all right, yeah. <laughs> He's doing okay in Nashville, right? And so the, these types of things. Do I expect that Cameron Dunbar is going to go tear it up in Minnesota? I don't. Um, but I do expect but that he'll he could. he get a chance. He, he, yeah, he'll probably see some time to do it. Yeah. Um, and so those are the types of things that we look at. And so you have to always have the full picture. And very rarely do I have a full picture of anything, including who's, who's underneath Cameron Dunbar on LA Galaxy 2 or down in the Academy, possibly. They want to move up. They want to move things around. Maybe that all makes a lot of sense to them. And when you're doing that, you're not you're not doing it to make money. You're doing it to move players, uh, to open spaces, and and possibly make make players happy. So so overall, Eric, you okay on Dunbar? Yeah, I'm good. I just said the one other wrinkle that I'll add to this, and we'll see what moves impact it is MLS Next Pro, with the LA Galaxy second team no longer being in USL. USL, and we've talked about this, is a professional soccer league. So there are teams who are not affiliated with MLS clubs who are those are guys who franchises who you know with full salaries and professionals yep. who are going at the, the whose purpose is not to feed into an MLS team with MLS MLS Next Pro that is going to be a feeder team that's basically a reserve league but the profile also skews a lot younger you're not getting you know these you know 28 year old guys you know who are going to be long in the tooth and kind of looking for a second chance you're, it's basically going to be your youth academy and your younger reserve team guys, you know, you don't want to waste those spots with older players. So I think right. that's going to be something interesting as well. If Dunbar is someone who maybe is at like a USL level, maybe MLS next pro is below that. And you need right. to send him, uh, you know, either to another MLS franchise mm-hmm. or maybe even like a USL team. So I, I'm going to be curious to see how this plays out with the rest of the, the G2 players. Although the G2 team does skew pretty young, but there may be some other guys who um, I want to say, I want to say I saw on Twitter, there was one of the older players who did end up, go, you know, finding a different team. I think that is going to be that MLS next pro is going to be an impact for it next season. It, it does feel like there are some players who don't want to be part of a subpar league. And it feels like MLS next pro is a subpar league. It's literally a reserve league. Yeah. So there, there can, you, you can get stuck in that purgatory. We've talked about the, you know, our quadruple a guys, it, it, I, I can I can see the <laughs> the the want to get out of there if you if, if you're kind of stuck in that limbo. 
I, I think it's nuts that MLS got scared of USL and, and pulled this because you're now saying we don't have the best place to develop you. We have this. And I don't know how you get academy players to continue to come through your academy and eventually go there. No, Hey, we're going to put you in this league that's not as good as USL. Um, probably not even as good as USL like champion. They have the championship yeah. and then they have like League One. It's probably not as good as League One, right? I mean... Mm-hmm. That's that's what we, I think we read between the lines with when Dennis DeClosa was here was he wasn't jumping into nope. that into the you know going to that league uh, you know until they absolutely were forced to join that league so I think kicking and screaming that, yeah that tells you a little bit about the level of that league so that was the first trade uh, that happened Cameron Dunbar uh, goes to Minnesota for a 2023 third round draft pick and 75k in 2023 general allocation money the second trade happened today. Uh, Steve Goff was the first to tweet it out um, about oh, about three minutes before I was ready to hit the button, too. <laughs> um, but uh, the L.A. Galaxy then uh, traded Derek Williams to D.C. United. So Derek Williams will be off to play and uh, play under Wayne Rooney uh, there in D.C. The L.A. Galaxy get one hundred and eighty thousand dollars in general allocation money. But in 2024, I was going to say, so, when do they get it? Yeah, next the, season, <laughs> not this season, next season. Listen, you know, it's like they're on credit, right? You, yeah. you, you buy it now, you can pay for it later. <laughs> um, 180K in 2024 uh, general allocation money. The, the really interesting thing here is that the Galaxy only net a little bit more because they paid 125K to DC in 2021 for Derek Williams discovery rights. So there's only like, you know, a 60 or I guess even less than that's like a 55K difference in what they paid for in 2021 and what they got back. So they, they're netting about 55K for Derek Williams, the rights to Derek Williams. Here's here's the interesting things. And there's a couple different scenarios that you sort of have to run through in order to do it. We told you Derek Williams contract was up. We knew that there was a club option out there now. Uh, so the galaxy moving Derek Williams to DC United for some money is good because he might not have even had a contract anymore. And if he mm-hmm. wanted to stay in the league, this was a way to get him to do it. And then DC actually paid money, even though it's not money now. It's money next year, right? So understand that the value that the LA Galaxy had embedded within Derek Williams was not very high, right? It's not like yeah. you're at a contract and you can be like, oh, you know, oh, I, <laughs> I got you. You can't. And, and in some ways, MLS does. It's like they have you. You're not allowed to go anywhere else unless they, they move. But, but that, that's funny. That's how you know I've been listening to the show and I'm an avid uh, co- co-host here. That's the point I was making. If you declined the option because you mm-hmm. didn't want to pay that 800K plus salary, there's no, you know, who's to say there's not a, another team that was willing to pay him that. Right. And then you you get nothing. So the fact that they were able to get at least something, I think they were looking basically to clear the books. Um, you know, yes. so, so that, that I think is <laughs> the fact that they deferred the money to next year tells you that the money was not what they were worried about. It's more about opening up that space. But I, I think the fact that they're able to get something that you're dead on, that's exactly the point I wanted to yeah. make. And I'll just echo that, that, you know, you're getting something for him as opposed to just saying, declining the option. Hey, do you want to stay for, you know, 500 K. And then he says, no, I'm actually going to go somewhere else. And then you're, you're done. You got nothing. The other part of this is that perhaps, and I was told that maybe this was also a possibility. There was a little rumor of it that Williams had clinched the automatic renewal of his option. And so therefore he was coming back for the third year. Ah, if the that's the case, right. If that's the case though, that's an even better deal for the LA Galaxy because he was not going to be a starter next year, right? Like you, you knew that. Yeah. And with with Caceres, and listen, Caceres is a question mark, and we can we can put, talk about him in here a little bit. But you knew that Sega Koulibaly, with the uh, in Kevin's article, they already talked about trying to renew Sega. Um, you knew they were trying to renew Jonathan Bond. Um, so you knew sort, and Caceres was mentioned in that as well. So you knew where their focus was. And if you watch Derek Williams sort of lose his starting spot a couple times, right. And then towards the end of the season, it was Caceres and Sega who starts the game against LAFC. It's Caceres and Sega, yeah. right. And Williams comes into that game whenever he needs to, but he's a sub. Well, you're not going to pay a sub $821,000 yeah, <laughs> for, for a Cameron Dunbar depth piece, you know, 75 or whatever he was making, you know, 105, something like that. Okay, but yeah, for uh, yeah, that's that's your Jorgen Shelvik uh, level territory when you're paying that much for a bench player. Yeah, it's not what it, you want. And he's someone who, when he came into the team, I, I was a big fan. He had some yes. big moments. I thought I thought we had our center back pairing with Williams and Koulibaly before uh, Caceres showed up. I I didn't dislike him in the back there. I think he nope. had some shaky moments, but it wasn't it wasn't detrimental. I mean, there <laughs> there were some actually. I I shouldn't say that. You know, there, there are some penalties and some things where. He, yeah. he, did, he did put some the galaxy in some tough situations, but, you know, look across the league. Uh, he I think he's an above average, 
MLS defender. Is he Correct. an elite defender? No, but you know, if wherever that average line, he's hovering right above it. The the and uh, I will remind everybody, uh, defense is not a perfect position, right? You're going to screw up, and when you screw up, people score goals, and you know all this stuff. That's, that's yeah. how the game works. Yeah, that's exact <laughs> every time. And and it's funny because whenever it's your team that scores the goal, you're like, man, look at how you tore that defense apart, and all blah, blah blah. And whenever you get scored on, you go into individuals. It's this person's fault. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, well, individual mistakes compound, and usually that's what ends up leading to every goal that has ever been scored has been as the result of a defensive mistake of some sort. Okay. So that's how those that's things bold. work. I'm sure that we'll get the researchers. Look, I'm sure there's some goal where I mean, the defender didn't make a mistake and just what, better luck. I mean, you know, like you look and Tim Howard scored from, you know, from his own penalty yeah, box in a windy <laughs> things. It was, it was a goalkeeper error, which is a defender who, who, who made that right. Didn't play the wind. Didn't get it. Bounced over defensive air. I can, I can, I can go on and on. It's always <laughs> right, a defensive right. air somewhere. I'm going to, I'm going to do my research on that. I'll that's get right. Back to you. Um, so, so, you know, when you look at that and you, and you look, you knew that Derek Williams was not in this long term. So what do the LA galaxy do? They go out and they clear it off the books. So the galaxy could clear $821,000 off the books. If you're going to add, uh, Williams and Dunbar so far, the LA galaxy have cleared in base salary, $870,000 and guaranteed salary, $958,000 already. We're already starting to count up and rack up on November 14th. So four days from now. Um, yes, I believe it's the pre-sale for Taylor Swift tickets, but it was also the deadline for, uh, for all the contract information, right? So the contract information is, is super important because we're going to find out who they're going to decline contracts on yeah. or who they're going to offer contracts on. And that's going to give you an idea again of where now it doesn't mean that person's gone because we've seen this many times. They decline contracts and they resign, right? And so we're working on getting Greg Vanny on the show. We can ask him these questions whenever he comes on. Um, we're sort of, <clears throat> I always give everybody a couple weeks to sort of decompress a little bit. But as you can see, they're busy working and, and doing things. So they're rocking and rolling already. But um, there is clearly something going on. And one of the positions of need is probably a starting center back. And y even if Caceres, now let's talk about Caceres for a second, right? Caceres, the big news for Caceres is that, as Alex Ruiz pointed out, is that Martin Caceres made the Uruguay 26-man roster for the World Cup. There are question marks about whether or not the, he even comes back from this and plays anymore or whether he goes home or whether he retires. There's a whole bunch of things. I think he's 35 years old, if yeah. I remember that correctly. So but he um, plays younger. He does. He does. And listen, <laughs> listen, we, we talk about this all the time. And this is we're going to talk about like for Kranis, Right. And we're going to yeah. talk about, uh, you know, Jaylen some of the. Uh, yeah. And Jalen Neal. And by the way, LA Galaxy fan gave us a five dollar super chat and says who had a Neal for Kranis Perez and Judd is most likely to have a breakout season in 2023. It's really funny that you talk about this stuff. I see center backs and especially with Neal and for Kranis, I see center backs as an older more mature position. And so at 35, Caceres can still play. Now, can he play every game? I don't think he can play every game, right? But what, what better guy to bring your young guys along? Someone with all that World Cup experience, someone who plays younger, who knows the game, who has a great mind for it. Like that, that's exactly the guy you want, you know, in front of Neil and for Kranis. And just to answer the question, uh, I think if you look at those three, Neil was getting some of those starts Okay. You know, two years ago, I think Vanny saw something in him. So I would put him at the top of the list. I, I like for Kranis a lot. I just Vanny for what he, Vanny hasn't given him the minutes on right. the first team or in preseason. Ne Neil so really hasn't that much yeah. either, but I, I know what you're but, saying. But v Neil has gotten that slight edge. He, not right. that he's gotten tons of min minutes either, but he has gotten some minutes. And then Judd, as much as I like Judd and I've, I, I'm just, I'm so afraid of the McBean, Augie Williams, uh, via real, it, just that how many guys have we put in this position? And it just, it never works out. I like Judd. Uh, and I, I think he's, he brings a little bit of that sauce. You know, when you had that game at SoFi against Chivas, he really looked comfortable. He right. was not backing down from the moment. He's someone who looks like he's not going to be afraid of MLS competition. So I would be excited to see, but you have, you have Chicharito and you have Dejan Jovalic. So it's not really, I don't see him getting tons of minutes either. So that's, I'd put him at the bottom of the list just because, it's not a position where the galaxy feel like they're, they're going to get, <laughs> I don't see anyone else getting a lot of day on you know, second leading goal, goal scorer on the team couldn't, could barely get minutes. So, you know, I don't think the G2 guy is going to steal that spot. See, I, I almost, I almost want to take that, that question. And, and instead of saying, who do you think is going to, who do you think now, who do you think gets the most minutes? Because that's going to be the answer. And when you look at people in front, 
I don't see Neil and Fakranis getting a ton of minutes whenever you are likely going out also to true. get a starting center center back. You have Caceres there. So, I mean, there's one spot and it rotates a little bit and you might get it. So I, I don't know that Neil and Fakranis fit that. Uh, Johnny Perez probably has, I think, a better chance than anybody uh, just yeah. in terms because of where he position. plays. Yeah. Because where he plays a position. So, I mean, if you're asking me, I'm going to say Perez. Judd is never getting any playing time. You have Dayon Jovalich, you have Chicharito, and then, like, who else do you want to put in front of that? I mean, Kevin Cabral probably plays in front of Judd, which is crazy, but that, you know, those are the types of things that, <laughs> that you look at. I just like to get people fired yeah, up. And my, and my apologies. I, I totally skipped Perez in there. I, I agree. I agree with you on Perez. Same same game. That SoFi game against Chivas, he also had that goal, and he looked yep. good. He looked comfortable out there. And because of his position, and I, we're going to see what other moves happen, but we, you know, we heard rumors of Efrain wanting out and wanting. I think he kind of fills in that spot. Someone you bring off the bench, look for that spark. I think Perez fits that mold pretty nicely and would be probably the most likely to get minutes out of those four. I skipped him. Skipped him. Didn't see him in the middle there. That's okay. Do you want to take that super chat? That one. That one's more. Uh, yeah, more Scott's. For you. Yeah, Scott. Uh, thanks to Scott in the chat. Donated 1999. So pretty, pretty solid super chat there. He said, "Please support the hammer with his fundraiser. I supported him as I continue to battle prostate cancer. So thanks, Josh, for all you do." So. Shout out to Scott donating here, donating on the Movember page. So again, this thing uh, that you see growing here, you know, it's not just not just for fun, not just for the looks doing it for, you know, prostate cancer. My dad was a prostate cancer survivor. So that's kind of a something that I'm doing near and dear. Again, on if you go to my Instagram page at Galaxy Profile, uh, you can see the link on there. I also have posted out on my Twitter or if you just at me, I'll send you the link if you want to donate. Don't feel obligated to do it. Uh, you know, shout out to Scott for doing it. But it just something that, you know, near and dear to my heart so i like to throw out there so appreciate it scott appreciate you being here listening keep fighting keep staying strong you're gonna be you're gonna get through it we're yeah, gonna scott, help you get through it scott you're a warrior uh anytime we can help you out let let us know we are uh right here and, and glad to have you as a listener for a long time scott I, I i know you've been falling around for a long time and and we've seen you for a long time so so thank you for that um I just think whenever you go back and look at these trades and what the LA Galaxy, they're obviously pointing to something. And in this particular case, I think they're pointing to center back. And I'm not the only one. There are several media uh, talking heads, so to speak, that think that as well. And what target do you say could possibly be for the LA Galaxy? Well, let's talk about Mr. Aaron Long. He is a free agent from the New York Red Bulls. I think he's 30 years old. So again, we talk about trending a little bit more mature at the center back position at 35 years old you can still play center back right there's there's ways to be able to do it the old positions are goalkeeper and center back right and even physical center backs can play into their mid 30s um and be fairly uh fairly good at it so looking at this trade and what they're trying to open up matt doyle obviously said looks like it's clearing out a bunch of cap space for the galaxy to make a run at aaron long uh, if you go ahead and look at Tom Bogert as well, um, he said teams he was expecting to be in the market for Aaron Long, uh, the LA Galaxy, Colorado Rapids, FC Dallas. Again, free agency coming up soon. I believe it starts on, let's see, I have it here, November 16th, if I remember correctly. Expansion draft, blah, blah, blah. We're going to talk about that in a second. Yeah, free agency opens on November 16th. So just a couple days away. Now, I don't expect anything to happen. Aaron Long's playing in a World Cup. Yeah. Although I think... Although I think the LA Galaxy should sign him right away, so that way they can say they have a player on the <laughs> U.S. men's national team again because they they're missing this streak that has been going on. Um, and so, um, but I do think the LA Galaxy are going after Aaron Long now. Aaron, I I was watching the Discord is a place for overreaction, and and yeah. I usually see that, and that's fine, and it's good. It's good to see the overreaction because then that often I find where I sit in all of this. Right, Aaron Long is a very capable defender. Uh, has been a very capable defender. In fact, one of the better defenders in all of Major League Soccer and as a U.S. national team player, um, as a as a as a uh, as not as a domestic player as well. That's important. Remember, Derek Williams was an international, but he didn't count as one because he had the dual passport. So he was a domestic player. You're not looking to spend all your international slots in the LA Galaxy, you know, had 10 international slots whenever it all came down. We've been watching the price of international slots and they've been fluctuating a little bit cheaper right now than maybe they have been in years past. Um, some teams are already buying up those international slots. And so if the LA Galaxy are planning to have 10 again, uh, then they should be also looking for international slots because as of right yeah. now, they have eight because it resets after every year. So they have eight available. They'll need at least two more if they're going to have the same number of internationals that they had last year, which is a question. Are they going to have the same number of internationals as last year? Uh, very well could. So um, that's one of those things. So Aaron Long, 
What do you think, Hammer? What yeah. are, you, are you an Aaron Long I, fan I, outside I of Brandon like, Vasquez completely stripping him in the in the game with Cincinnati in the playoffs? They, I, uh, chill. Yeah, I, I, this is why. Again, I say this just about every week. I need to take like a couple months off because we're mind melding. I'm right there with you, and I think what the hit the point in the chat as well. He said, "Is everyone against Aaron Long? Is he that bad?" I don't think he's that bad, but given the roster, the USA roster drop that just happened yesterday, he was one of the players who was much maligned, who, you know, fan, the fan base was not happy uh, that he was on the World Cup roster going to Qatar. Now, that being said, I think both things can be true. I think the U.S. men's national team fans could say, man, is this really the best center back option that we're going to be sending to a World Cup and kind of be bummed that he's on that roster and that there's no one better who can be in that spot? I think that's a fair critique, and, and I'm kind of maybe falling in that camp. Does that mean that he's not going to be a good MLS defender and can't fill a role that the LA Galaxy need as well? I, I don't think he's a dumpster fire of a player. He's been uh, in the league. He has that experience. He got called up to a World Cup. So, you mm -hmm. know, your stock is never higher than right now. You know, he, he's obviously riding high. You know, Greg Berhalter obviously sees something in him. So he's obviously not that bad. So I think there's levels to it, and I think both things can be true. I think... You can say the U.S. wishes they had better a better quality center back than Aaron Long going in the back, but that doesn't mean that he is going to not be a great uh, Galaxy defender or could be a good Galaxy defender. Now, the irony in all this is that you're clearing cap space, 800K in cap space, and then you know Aaron Long is going to come along and he made a million dollars last season. So yep. now you're going to just dump all that money right back in him and basically, you know, and you're not saving international slot because Derek Williams you made all those same points. And so that's kind of the irony of it all is you're clearing this cap space and you're thinking, well, maybe Aaron Long is returning from injury. We can offer him, maybe get him at a discount and say, hey, we can help re rehabilitate you and, uh, you know, get, get you back on track and get you, you know, back in that national team scene. But he's in the national team scene. He just got called up to a World Cup. So I don't think that you're going to get him at a discount. I don't think that I think no. he's going to have offers coming his way. And so if the Galaxy want him, they are going to have to pay that million, probably million plus you know, 1.1, some, somewhere in that area, 1.1, 1.2. And the question becomes, do you want to dump that much of your salary cap in a center back? Or do you want to, you know, maybe look and, and spend that money more wisely elsewhere? So that becomes the question. So uh, all that to say, I don't think he'd be a terrible addition to the LA Galaxy, but at the same time, there is a cost associated with it. The Galaxy, something is going to give somewhere. I don't think, you know, going back to what I was saying about, uh, you know, Cameron Dunbar, Aaron Long, I don't think, is the piece that's going to, you know, set the galaxy in motion. I don't think that's the the final puzzle piece that they need. I, I mean, it, if you can shore up the defense, and again, the galaxy have trended better every year under Vanny for shoring up the defense, right? Four goals better than last year. It was like 22 goals better than the than 2020 whenever he came in 2021. So there's been that trend of continuing to get better. So Aaron Long could help you. I, I worry a little bit about his passing because his passing isn't exactly the most accurate. And for what Vanny wants, playing out of the back and all the other things, you worry about <laughs> and, that, right? And, and for what Berhalter wants, that's kind of the funny yeah. thing of it all. Yeah, and that's and that's where he's going. Uh, he is he, he's a known factor. Um, you know, we'll see. Uh, again, I was joking that they should sign him before the World Cup. You wait. You wait until after. And, yeah, and, and you don't spoil by the way, party. E Super says, but in the chat room, I think it's wise that you sort of sit and wait and you're not making any moves unless it's like internal league stuff that isn't going to be affected by World Cup things. Um, and they're more maybe depth pieces than like things. But you wait to see what's going to happen and who's going to be available in the winter. And, um, and you yeah. look at all the injuries leading up to the World Cup. I that That's all this to say. There's probably going to be some injuries at the World Cup as well. So you're better off if there's a player going to the World Cup. You don't want to have anything signed until after that World Cup. Absolutely. A $20 super chat from uh, Stefan. Uh, is it Stefan or is it Stephanie? Yeah, I feel like it's Stefan. I feel like it's Stefan. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. Uh, belated thanks for the Farai Mutatu update. We I will give you a Farai Mutatu. Uh, <laughs> Damian Calhoun had a Farai update today. Um, also, any chance of starting an Eden Hazard to the LA Galaxy? I mean, you can. I, I mean, everybody's <laughs> yeah. associated with the Galaxy. For nineteen ninety nine, absolutely. Eden yeah. Hazard, welcome to the LA Galaxy. Yep. Uh, cheers, Josh and Hammer. Thank you. We appreciate that. Uh, super. Uh, Popo, Papa Zao? Papa Zao. Popo Zao. Popo Are you Zao? familiar with the Ke Kevin Federline classic Popo Zao? No, I'm out. Oh, That's, my gosh. I should be. I don't know apparently. if that says how old I am or if like you were in the internet at the right time. That's Britney Spears' ex-husband. I remember I remember okay, who Kevin yeah, yeah. Federline is. Yes. Oh, he had a song and it was it was awful, but 
to the point where it was so bad it was good. Do you think Kevin Federline's in our chat room right now and just gave us five dollars? So. Okay, so. five dollars. Thank Free you for Brittany. the five dollars super chat. Appreciate it. Um, but anyway, so I think they are are targeting Aaron Long. I think I wouldn't be surprised at all if this is something that happens. Um, it makes sense. Again, you're looking for a center back that is going to be able to play a lot of games because Caceres probably can't. But you're also looking for the balance between Sega and Caceres, if Caceres even comes back. I would imagine if the LA Galaxy let go of Derek Williams, um, that they have a plan, that they either know Caceres is coming back or that they know he's not coming back. And that, I mean, that's the other thing. Let's take this for a second. Caceres doesn't come back. Okay, now you need another center back because yeah. you don't have one, right? And so Aaron then, Long very well could be that starting center back, right? Then you do have to pay that price because you literally don't have anything else. Yeah, so that that's that's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Yeah, it, it's but, uh so so again, I, I, we very rarely, and I know fans pretend that they do all the time. Um, I know media members pretend they do all the time. We very rarely have the full picture in front of us to understand how all this happens. Uh, the only thing we can do is invite Greg Vanny on over and and ask him the questions. Right? He can he can and, chill in the, the podcast say, for a little e- while. Even even then, we get the the political speak where there's things he can't say, and you, <laughs> of course not. You get you get the answers that the old Chicharito, you know, five minute answer that. You realize, wait, my my my, my question wasn't answered. It's was like the the super chat with Fry Mutatu. Are we ever going to get to the bottom of that? Yeah, he's on, we, he's on the expansion list. Yeah, he is on the expansion list. Let's talk about Fry Mutatu though for a second because somebody asked, are we ever going to know the whole story with Fry Mutatu? I think we've told the whole story, haven't we? I mean, I, I think I, 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 I don't think know we, if we have. Okay, I, I I know the whole story, but I well, don't know if that's been shared to the public. We, We've said it. I've said it on the show because I actually had to go to the galaxy and get permission to say it because I knew it with off the record stuff. And I sort of had to get it on the record and on the record is the LA galaxy signed for Mutatu. He was in preseason. Everybody remembers. Remember, we were actually high on him. We're like, hey, for Mutatu can play. He scored scored goals. We thought he was the number two. He was. Absolutely. And then all of a sudden he went away and everybody was like, what's going on? Well, the LA galaxy uh, along their their due process of signing the player with MLS and everything else found out that um, his immigration status was not clear here in the United States. And if you remember, there's a big story about him coming to the United States and his parents were not in the United States. As a matter of fact, his parents had to leave and go back outside the United States because of visa issues and stuff that were going on. And so Farai Mutatu thought was thought to have uh, to have been cleared um, by that. In fact, his college thought that he was perfectly legal to be in the United States, and that didn't seem to be the case. All right. And it was the LA Galaxy and their paperwork and going through all the stuff that they were trying to do that eventually figured this out. Now, we can say the Galaxy didn't do their homework, but bottom line is nobody did their homework because nobody knew what was going on, right? Like the college was fine with it, right? And now the Galaxy are trying yeah. to get him and, and do all this. I don't know if his status changed because he wasn't in college anymore, but I don't believe that's the case. I believe that he he probably shouldn't have been allowed to play in college either, right? Those types of things. The bottom so, line is the Galaxy are going out of their way to try and correct all this. As a matter of fact, uh, Damian Calhoun had an update today. I'll read that. Um, uh, Damian says... Uh, Farai Mutatu is still in Zimbabwe. Uh, Galaxy wanted to move him to South Africa to play, but was unable to finalize. Vanny, uh, and this is a quote from Vanny, feel like we're making some progress, but don't have a definite, t- a definitive timeline yet. Hopeful to get him in start of preseason. All right, so now that's as hopeful as I've heard Greg Vanny about this. In uh, Basically, Greg Vanny, every time I'd ask him, he's like, he goes, I don't know. Like, we're trying to work through all this stuff, and it's just a lot. And every time we think we make a step forward, it's like ends up being a step backwards, and it's just not a thing. So um, they have gone on and actually done this. I mean, they could have cut bait and run, right? Which is really crazy. If it, Bottom line is that Vanny just said he hopes to have him in for preseason. They still want this guy. They signed him. Yeah. Um, you know, he's on the team. He's just off roster at the moment. So they were technically paying for him, uh, to be in Zimbabwe and yeah. they were trying to find him training stints in order to go to and places to play and all this other stuff. So that, that's kind of the interesting to, thing too. And I'm glad that that update is out there is that they were trying to find him a place to play over there as well. It's like, they don't want him just over there, not doing anything. It's not only just training, but it's also, Hey, if you, you know, maybe he doesn't have the paperwork to play in MLS, but if he's, you know, in his home country, maybe on the home continent, you can get him, you know, playing somewhere attached to a team so he can, you know, still continue to develop. So that is kind of hopeful news, uh, you know, going in that direction. Now, where it changes a little bit is, you know, he is on the expansion, (laughs) um, you know, draft list. But I think if every if all the teams know about this issue, then maybe you're not crazy about bringing him in. So that's probably why he's on that list is because it's very unlikely that another team is going to want to deal 
with a headache in the situation. So I think that's, you know, for people who are worried that he's on that list, um, then, then I, I, I don't, I think that there's, that's, it's almost like, you know, a chess move putting him on there. And then the last thing that I just want to end with, with Mutatu, that's kind of funny out of all the galaxy talk that we do, I think for Rai Mutatu, the people wanting to hear about it and talk about it, it's like such a skewed conversation to people who are on the roster and get minutes right. who we don't talk about. But then this guy who hasn't seen, you know, first team minutes and just the mystery behind him, you know, people are interested in this story and want to see what the deal is and if he can produce. So it's just kind of fascinating to me that, you know, of all the people to talk about that for Rai Mutatu somehow becomes a heavy discussion as part of the podcast. So it's kind of funny. Backup quarterback syndrome, like yeah. to the to the nth degree. What, this guy? Well, he was highly touted coming out of college. <laughs> Let's throw him in. Um, so anyway, so we'll see. Wh- and I'm sure Greg Vanny will give us more details as that becomes. But I'll be honest. Vanny may say he was hoping that they're going to have him in for preseason. I would not hold my breath. Uh, just the way that things are moved, they do not move quickly. Um, not even a little bit, not even for a second, right? I mean... There's other stuff, too, that has happened around the league, like Sebastian Legette just signed a long-term deal with uh, FC Dallas to stay in FC Dallas, I think, for the next three years. Yeah, I was now, that say, could, I offered him a spare room, but I, I, don't, I don't think he'll need it. He signed the contract. He's good to go. He's good to go. He's good. Um, and, and Becky says she doesn't want to hang out with you anymore. That's, um, you know, my, my wife saw right through that. She, yeah. she she knew what I was trying to do. I understand. Um, <laughs> so, um, but with him doing that, there's also a question about whether or not the LA Galaxy got paid money for all of the stuff. Remember, there were incentives and bonuses that were around him. We don't know that, and we never know that. They never tell us whether or not they got money, but it would be a fun question to ask. Did you guys get any money for Sebastian Lingette after he switched teams twice, right? You know, he goes yeah, goes around, still... goes to New England, and then he ends up in uh, in Dallas. Yeah, I, I, he, did, he did well towards the end of the season with Dallas. So I think whatever incentives there were, we're probably up until that contract ended. So whatever this new deal is, I think that's it's a done deal. So it's just, yeah, it's, I'm curious to see whatever metrics, you know, if we know Derek Williams or Chicharito, right. you know, maybe we can ask him the right question, corner him and uh, say, yeah. hey, we heard the incentives, you know, went through. And so maybe he'll, he'll let us know. Let's get you ready for the MLS expansion draft that's coming up. Now, uh, at the 29th club in Major League Soccer will be St. Louis City SC. We're not doing like St. Louis, are we? We're not We're not playing that game, are we? It's just St. Louis because everybody Saint, calls it St. Louis. It's St. Louis. St. Louis. I, do people call it that? I don't think they I don't think they. I thought. I didn't that's think they did. Thing. But I, I don't believe you. But when you say St. Louis City, right, it almost sounds like it should be St. Louis City, right? I mean, it and, feels, and you, I think it flows better that yeah, way. Yeah, and you, you don't want to call them SLC. That sounds like Salt Lake City, and there's already Real Salt Lake. St. Louis. We're calling them St. Louis. St. Louis. They're St. Louis. So anyway, St. Louis is uh, is coming into the, the, the league, and as is customary, there will be an expansion draft. Now, expansion draft rules have changed so much since I have first started covering these. Like, it used to be like the expansion team will get to pick 12 players, and there were 10 teams. And so each team can only lose two players, though. You know, it was like, oh, my God, things are actually going to happen. Uh, that is not the case in this one. Uh, as it was not la- as it was last year as well, right? Charlotte only got to pick five players, right? St. Louis only gets to pick five players. Five players from 28 other teams. Well, not really, because you have to count out Austin, Atlanta, DC United, LAFC, and NYCFC because they all had players chosen last year, and you can't have it in two consecutive cycles. So they don't have any teams. So it's going to be 20, excuse me, 23 teams, um, and they were each allowed to protect 12 players, 12 eligible players. And we know the list of players that did not get protected by the LA Galaxy. So let's go over that list because, gosh, people jump up and down and really freak out about these things. Uh, Daniel Aguirre is uh, not protected. Martin Caceres is not protected. Douglas Costa is not That's protected. An interesting one, yeah. It is an interesting one. We can talk about We'll talk about all these. Uh, Nick DePew, Chase Gasper, Carlos Harvey, Jonathan Klinsman, Sasha Kleschen, Kelvin Leardam, Farai Mutatu, Richard Sanchez, Victor Vasquez, Jorge Villafania, and Eric Zavaleta are all the unprotected players for the LA Galaxy. Now, you will notice that there is one designated player on here uh, that is unprotected, which means two designated players were protected, right? So Chicharito and Kevin Cabral were protected in this. Now, uh, people like to throw this out every time there's an expansion draft. Um, just because you're a designated player does not mean you a- have to automatically be protected. That is not a rule. It has never been a rule, as a matter of fact, as far as I remember. Now, these, you did have to protect designated players if they had a no-trade clause. In their contract, yeah. In their contract, right? So if I imagine Chicharito has a no-trade clause, you're going to protect. Plus, you're also going to protect him. That's one of those you're going to protect him anyway, right? So one of those. 
Uh, Kevin Cabral is a really interesting one because people will put, how can you leave uh, Douglas Costa unprotected yeah, and, but and not you Kevin. have Kevin Cabral? Yeah. Two, uh, there's, did I say, I think I figured out three ways or three reasons, and all three could be true as well. Uh, three reasons why you would want to protect Kevin Cabral. Number one reason is because he's going to play next year and you want him to be on your team. So Kevin Cabral is protected. Okay. That's <laughs> no one's number one. going to like that one. Move on to the next one. I'm just saying it's, it's, that's absolutely <laughs> that is op- a reason. That's option okay? A, correct. Number two is that he has a no trade in his cl- cl- clause in his contract. So that is that. And by, and he, by rule, you'd have to protect him. He does have a lengthy contract. So that wouldn't surprise me though. At the time that they signed him, that right. they included something like that. Okay. So possibly no trade clause. The third reason is maybe the most interesting, or at least the third reason I can come up with, is that you protect him because you already have a deal worked out for him to move him in the wintertime. And so you need him not to go somewhere else because otherwise you won't have a deal anymore. Yeah, that's right? my that's where my brain goes is, you know, the reason why you protect him is you have wheels in motion probably to loan him out because I, 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 I said he has a lengthy contract. It was four years, five years, something like that. He he still has a few more years. So if you are going to loan him out somewhere and hope that he develops and you want to see the spoils of that, you know, when he comes back, you know, a better player. <laughs> and I say that with my tongue and my cheek right. here. But, right. you know, th- if that's the long term goal, then you, you want to protect him because, OK, maybe you're still looking to get rid of him. Right. But you want to see whatever rewards come out, you know, after loaning him out or figuring out uh, some deal. That's what that's where my brain tends to go, even though. You know, it could very well be just option A and that's that's that done deal. But, you know, that's why we're here. We're, we're here to speculate. Yeah, we're here to speculate. And and to me, and I've been fairly, I think, fairly vocal about it is I don't expect Kevin Cabral to be back on the team next year. It just there's not a lot of things that line up for me, uh, whether or not the L.A. Galaxy move him now um, or basically you have to wait until the winter transfer window opens across Europe and all those things. The likelihood that you would move him and loan him out to somewhere would probably be Europe is where it would, would happen. Um, so if you can do that to Cabral, then that's where it would be. So those are the three reasons why you might have protected Kevin Cabral. Um, two of the, one of those reasons is, is not a good reason. Um, but two of them are, would, would plausible. make, make it's complete like, sense to me. It's like um, Mythbusters, you know, it's all, it's plausible. Yeah. And, and normally I'm the guy who says, oh, you can't, uh, you can't trade somebody or, or transfer somebody that nobody wants, right? Like everybody's always trying to get rid of the worst player. Kevin Cabral has enough potential to still be able to go somewhere. He's not uh, broken completely. Although, no, he's not. He's close, right? <laughs> actually, but, I take that back. I feel like he's broken, but no, but sometimes the broken toys are the cheapest ones because there's a you know, uh, a malfunction. That's why you go to Ross. That's why you, you go just to need to change Max. the batteries. Yeah. You just yeah. The shirt, the, batteries. the shirt, the stitching is off a little bit. If you look at it kind of sideways, no one's going to notice. Yeah. Um, the bottom line, I love it. So, so this is a good question. Uh, Gabriel says, uh, what do you care if he goes to Missouri or anywhere else? There's money in this, right? So there's ways that you can maybe sell him to a league two team where you still get some of your money back. You're only going to get $50,000 in general allocation money. If St. Louis picks him up. Right. So yeah. yes, you, you do care. And you don't get a trade. You don't get a player no. back or gam or Tam. You don't, you don't get anything. You just, he's gone. He's off the, the books. So, so yes. So he, there is still a place for, for somebody like Kevin Cabral. Now, the interesting thing is I know lots of people have looked at this list and I, I hear the hot takes. I mean, people are like, well, Daniel Laguerre has gone. I'm, eh. Remember St. Louis has five picks. You're going to probably want, and sometimes you can even pick teams, pick, uh, make picks that you're going to trade, yeah, right? Because that's what, it, that's what um, Austin did that, or who? Who was yeah, in I think Charlotte so. did that last year. Yeah, yeah, Charlotte. That's right. Charlotte yeah. did that. They they made some trades with things, right? But the other thing you want to do is get yourself solid MLS players. That's, Daniel Aguirre doesn't fit that yet. He hasn't had the exposure of the first team stuff. Now, could you take a risk on it? You could, but that's a big risk when you only get five. That's and, why this this feels like one of those chess moves because you're right. The the expansion teams that have utilize this draft the main thing that they go most of the time is veterans mls veterans guys who have been around the league they know the league they're familiar with you know player you know usually like there's always a defender that gets picked up you know who's been around the league for five or six seasons that's usually fits the profile so that's why this feels like a chess move no i wouldn't want daniel aguirre to go but at the same time 
does everyone else who's not an LA Galaxy fan know who that is? And is he going to be on the right. radar for them to get scooped up? Probably not. And, you know, is that someone who you're going to will? If you have 23 teams to pick from, is right. that one of your five? That's the guy who you're going to build your franchise around? Around Again, I don't think, I think he's safe uh, that, in that regard. That's why it's not for I'm Mutatu either, right? Is because yeah. there's too much unknown there to sort of risk it on that. The, the, uh, people are saying, well, maybe it would be Douglas Costa. I, I don't think so. I mean, I would love to see somebody. I would love to see so, it happen. The love difference to would see be, it happen. Yeah, you'd you'd have to want to pay him that DP salary because his the you'd have to take him and his contract. Yep, that's that's where the rub is, and that's another one of those chess moves. It would be kind of funny if I, hey, maybe St. You know, St. Louis says we can fix him. We're, D- Douglas Costa is going to be our our splashy signing. You know, from Brazil, this is where he wants to play in Missouri. This is where it's going to happen. So, yep. you know, maybe that you know, a man can dream. Yeah, not uh, not going to happen. I mean. To be honest, and I've sort of looked at some of the some of the analysis on who's out there and who possibly could could go and where you look for MLS players, right? Where do you look for domestic sort of MLS players or guys that you can really fit in? Nick DePew probably fills that that role pretty well for St. Louis when they're looking for a serviceable, serviceable center back. Who's they, probably not expensive. Yeah. Who's yeah. Not super expensive. So you can get them in there. So, I mean, and as much as people just clutch their chest and started laughing, Nick DePew is a serviceable center back in major league soccer. Is he a starter for every single game? Not for the LA galaxy. Could he be a starter for every, for, for St. Louis? He could absolutely be a starter. Chase Gasper is another solid, solid defender. MLS experience. Someone MLS been experience. Around, yeah. Been around. It's an important position to go. I know people hate Chase Gasper. I don't think, I, listen, I would hope that Chase Gasper is on the LA Galaxy this year. I, re- I really do because um, I think that Raheem Edwards is not an everyday left back. Um, and I think the Galaxy need a little more solid defending from that. And I think Chase Gasper gives that much better than Raheem Edwards. Doesn't mean there's not a place for Raheem Edwards. I think there is. Um, and there's going to be a hybrid in there as well. But I, I still like, I'm still I'm still relatively happy with Chase Gasper and what he does. In his just, role. Yeah. In his role. You just can't, don't ask him to do stuff outside his role. And don't put him in positions where he's going to get countered to death because he's not, he doesn't have the speed, speed that Raheem Edwards does, right? So yeah. those type of things. Other than that, do I worry about any of these players? I don't think that the Galaxy will have. Nick DePew is probably the strongest chance that the that thing. People have said Martin Caceres, somebody 35 years old, may or may not come back from the World Cup. I don't think you're picking him. And he has an option. So I think if the team does pick him up, then you're going to have to offer him a contract or an option. And so basically, you know, there's if Martin Caceres gets selected by St. Louis, and then St. Louis makes him an offer. He has every right to say, you know, actually, you know what? I'm re- I'm retiring. I'm done. Uh, I'm not accepting those terms. And then you've just wasted one of your slots. So I think that's, I think it's very unlikely to, that Caceres, one, gets selected, or two, if he does get selected, that he accepts whatever terms and offers because, uh, you know, he he's in an option year, and I don't I don't know that it's guaranteed, um, you know, that he has to accept or write whatever contract. So that's kind of the interesting thing, yeah. um, with him. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, anything else. Anyway, so that's, that's sort of question. What... You don't think question is no, is... no. I think he'd retire I, at this point. He yeah, gets he sort of would. decide where he wants to go, so he might just retire. I don't think he plans on retiring. I just think that if that was the case, that he wouldn't go anywhere. <coughs> I ran into Sasha on Halloween, by the way, dressed oh, up as a you. mummy. Dressed up well, as a mummy. If you've seen him, I'm, seen him I'm dressed as Sasha for Halloween, so it kind of worked the, out. There you go. Perfect. That's why I, I knew. I knew you looked like somebody I knew. Um. <laughs> The expansion draft itself takes place uh, tomorrow, so on Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific time is whenever that will take place. Um, basically, they get three minutes for each pick, but they're the only team, so like you it's already respect, selected. It's, a, like, it's done in advance, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be on MLSsoccer.com. Uh, it's going to be on uh, St. Louis's um, YouTube channel, so you can see that there. So uh, MLS app, all those places. You can find it if you're interested in it. Again, I expected it's over pretty quick. Um, that things happen, but they will well, draw it out for some suspense, say, right? They'll, they'll drag it out and they'll build it up. And, you know, Charlie Davies will interview somebody, but basically just, you know, half an hour after the draft, check in and then you'll see the list. You'll see the graphic of all five people who were selected. And then if it's a galaxy player, go to Twitter and you'll have everyone yelling with their blue checks and going crazy. Yeah. I, you, anybody can have be a blue check. Now <laughs> Twitter, Twitter's just a giant, like it, it, it's it's like sad for somebody who grew up right at now. the beginning part yeah. of Twitter when I was like such this wonderful and I have friends even now um, and this podcast was basically built on Twitter like you know and reaching out to people and talking about the galaxy doing all this stuff it's sad to sort of see where it's at anyway um, <laughs> crazy not, times whatever you know I just 
it just is what it is. Uh, yeah. Contract decisions coming up on November 14th. Free agency opens on November 16th. Again, don't expect anything to happen real quick. I expect most things to happen post-World Cup, but we'll see. Uh, stage one of the re-entry draft and the end-of-year waivers on November 17th, and stage two of the re-entry draft on November 22nd. So there will be movement there. The big date that you need to circle right now is November 14th. That's when contracts and bona fide offers are put out, and we'll find out who the LA Galaxy plan on keeping, who they've exercised options on, and who who is out of contract and technically uh, not eligible sort of to come back as an LA Galaxy player. So those guys usually end up in the re-entry drafts uh, in stage one and stage two. So that's where we are at right now. LA Galaxy moving two players, racking up some cash, right? So they've got a little bit of spending cash now. They're they're good. Their mom dropped them off at the gate at Disneyland. She said she'll be <laughs> back to pick them up at six. Um, a little spending money. A little spending money in your pocket. A little wham, a little walking around money. That's right. So $958,000 right now. And the Galaxy <laughs> could, could even pick up on more of that. Um, if you're looking at their overall general allocation money that they have as well, which could be used to push that up over a million dollars if you're really paying attention... Seventy-five thousand dollars from the uh, from the the Dunbar trade. So you can start putting that together and figuring out where everything is going. So that's where we are at uh, LA Galaxy. A little quiet. I I don't know about Monday in a podcast yet. So we'll keep you updated. I, Kevin is getting ready to go to to Qatar, um, and so once he's gone, we're sort of out of that. Is he um, staying at one of the the resorts, the the man-made he, resorts? He is he is staying at I think. Uh, the media bubble that he is in, like the media okay. thing he is in, is at one of the, like the nicer hotels. And if you remember the U.S. men's national team, I don't know if you've seen their hotel, but they have one of the nicest hotels in all of Qatar as well. So, um, yeah, times. I think there's a there's a lot of things. Uh, by the way, a five dollar super chat from Soul Echoes. Um, so, do you think there's pressure on the Galaxy um, after LAFC? There's a huge amount of uh, after LAFC won a, won a cup. Yeah, we talked go about back, it at the beginning. Go back to minute minute yes. minute three. But yeah, absolutely, I think that. It, it adds doesn't yeah it, it it adds something to it if you can't it you can't close your eyes to it yeah yeah and 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 if you if you are closing your eyes to it then you're part of the problem um so that's that's certainly it um but i think that does it so we'll keep you updated about a podcast on monday um some moves possibly coming up on the 14th and some other things so look go to twitter go to the website we'll try to have those up for you and ready for you anything else hammer you want to get to no, I think we're good. It's World Cup season. So, you it's know, World Cup season. May, maybe one more show just to, you know, give a farewell to the panda and kind of wrap up any loose ends. But you deserved a break. I mean, I'm giving you Thanksgiving week off. So, oh, enjoy, thank you. In, enjoy that I, week off and uh, we'll get back to it after that. I was going to take it off anyway, but thank you. I, I appreciate that. So, <laughs> I ran so, it by so. corporate. We're, we're good to go. That's good. If you are planning not this weekend, but next weekend, uh, and you would like to come and uh, and support uh, not only the podcast, but uh, the the charity charitable organization that I volunteer a lot of time with at the at the train club, uh, we are doing a Toys for Tots drive on the 19th and 20th at our public run days. Um, I plan on being there for most of those days, most of the, the day on each day. I'll probably be running trains, doing all that stuff. Um, but you can bring toys in, a new unwrapped gift, put it in our, our, our one of our boxes. We're trying to collect 200 toys. We are, with just members, about 25 to 50 toys into it. So we're going to need about 100, which I think we can do. Um, so if bad. you're interested yeah, at you're, all. You're, you're, yeah. you're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, not a problem. I mean, I've made five trips to Target just to make sure. <laughs> this is my baby and I'm running it as well. So uh, uh, do it. But if you want any information on that, ocmetrains.org is the website and you can find information on that. All right. Anything else, Hammer? We're good? No, I think we're good. I'm, I'm bummed I'm missing out on the train show. Yeah. You, maybe, no, you're maybe, not. I'll, maybe, no. I'll give, maybe I'll send a toy. No, no. You're not allowed to. I'm not. Right. I'm angry at you right now. All so, right, you, And you should know that. Uh, tell people where they can find you. Let's go. All right. As of right now, you can still find me on Twitter without a blue check at Hammer EV. You can also find me on Instagram at Galaxy Profile. That's Galaxy P R O F O U L. And our Movember uh, donation link is on there. Link in the profile at Galaxy Profile. All right. If you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at J Gessman, J G U E S M N. And of course, at Galaxy Podcast. Head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com for all of our shows, all of our uh, YouTube shows, all of the writings, any news we can put up there as well. Cornerofthegalaxy.com. All right. I think that about does it for us. Again, maybe back on Monday, maybe not back on Monday, but definitely back on Thursday. We'll make it happen. All right. Uh, for Eric, the Portuguese Hammer Beer, I'm Josh Pato Guessman. You've been listening to our little Corner of the Galaxy. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. 
fans, we thank you for listening, and we ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody. <laughs>